In this video series, I'll demonstrate how to create an application from scratch with Angular and Firebase. The first thing we need is to have Node.js installed. So if you write node-v inside of your terminal, you'll get the version of your installed Node.js. If you do not get this, you need to go to this side and install Node.js. And by default, when you install it, you also get the Node Package Manager along with it. But if you want to make sure that you have it, you can write npm-v, and then you will get the inversion of the package manager. The next thing we need is to install Angular CLI. If you have already installed it, you can just write ng version, and then you will get the version of your Angular CLI. If you have not installed Angular CLI, and you don't get this one up, then you need to write npm, global install angular slash cli and then you can pick a version here if you want to uh, but you don't need to you can just write this and press enter and uh, the last thing we need is to have firebase tools installed so you can install firebase tools with pretty much the same command as before you just write uh, npm install globally firebase tools like this and uh, since I already have it installed, I'm not going to go ahead and install it again. But if you write Firebase, you can confirm your installation. So these are the things that you need. When you have all the installations you need, you need to go to console.firebase.com and then click this Add Project. So I already have a project here, but you could just click Add Project and give it a name. And then we're ready to get started with programming. So let's create a new working directory. So I'm going to go into a folder I have called source. I keep all my source code in here. And I'm going to make a new directory just called Firebase Video, like this, and go insert FB Video. And inside of this directory, I will initialize a new Angular project. So I'm just going to write ng new. And now this Angular installation wizard will just take you through it. I'm just going to call the Angular program front end. Um, and I'm just going to go through a quick installation here. Now that the NPM install is also done, I'm going to go ahead and open up the project in WebStorm here. And I opened the folder just before the Angular folder. So the one called it the video. And I think we should just check that it runs. So just go into the front end directory here and write ngserve, the command for running the application, just to check that everything looks the way it's supposed to. And now once uh, the ngserve command is done, you will get an application that looks like this. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the packages that we need inside of our Angular application. So the ones we installed previously were the global installations. Uh, now this one is just one that we're going to use inside of our Angular application. So npm install Firebase like this. When the installation is done, you get this message here and it says that we now added some packages and we can go inside of our package.json file inside of our Angular directory. And we can see that we now have version 9.18 installed. So what we're going to do now is we're going to connect our Angular program to our Firebase project, which means we need to go into the project here on the console. And then you can click this little hamburger menu. And then on this sidebar here, you can click the little wheel and there is something called project settings. And in here, there is a configuration and you need to copy that configuration. I'm going to show you what it looks like, but I'm not going to show my configuration. We can just make a new file, just make a JavaScript file and then just call it a Firebase config. Um, so just say no to this. Um, generally, we don't want configurations to be committed to Git. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to go into Git ignore here. And then I'm just going to write Firebase config.js like this. And inside of this Firebase config.js, um, you're going to paste the configuration 
from the, the console. And it's going to look like this. And then it's just going to have a bunch of stuff like an ID, and then it's going to say a string or something like that. Um, so just paste your configuration inside this one. And also to make sure that you add the export const, I think inside of the uh, snippet they have on the Firebase console, they don't actually write export. Just remember to add it here. And now once we have the uh, configuration set up here, we need to use it somewhere. And uh, we're going to add an Angular service. So the Angular service is going to be responsible for sending all of the requests to the Firebase project. In order to create a new service, we're just going to use the CLI for it. So let's go into the source folder and we can go into the app folder. And it's out of here, we're just going to write ng short for Angular, g short for generate, s short for service, and I'm going to call it fire. So the name of the file that we're going to be writing the code in is going to be fireservice.ts. And we can see that it's right here. And there is also a test file for it, uh, but we don't really need the test file for now. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. And we also don't need the component test file. So I'm also just going to delete that one. Now, before we can make any queries, we need to import Firebase. So I'm going to write import Firebase from, and now we're going to find the package from inside node modules. And we need this one. And then we also need the one that's just called Firebase and Pat Firestore. And then we also need the configuration we just created. So we can write import everything as config from, and now just the file that we created before, we call it Firebase config.js. So since our configuration doesn't have a type, TypeScript might actually complain about it. Uh, but because the browser does not understand TypeScript, it understands JavaScript. TypeScript simply compiles into JavaScript. Uh, we can fix that by just changing the values inside of this tsconfig.json file. So if you just open up your Explorer here, you can find the csconfig file right here. Um, and you can just add this no implicit any, and then just say false. Uh, so no implicit any is just a rule that it's trying to enforce on you. Then you're going to get this error here. Uh, but if we now add this no implicit any and set it to false, and we then run ng serve, then we're not going to have a problem anymore. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create an instance variable and we're just going to call this Firebase application. And now inside of our constructor here, we're going to say this Firebase application equals Firebase. Remember the identifier here is defined up here and there exists a method called initialize app. And inside of this initialize app, it wants the config that we created here. So we just write config dot firebase config. And now our Angular application knows where in the world the Firebase application actually exists. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an instance variable called Firestore. So I'm just gonna write Firestore. And we can also give this a type so we can write firebase.firestore.firestore. .firestore. Yeah, I know that this seems like a funny syntax, but uh, just bear with me. And now we're going to write this firestore equals firespace.firestore, but as a method. So every time we want to persist some data or read some data from our database, the database is this one, Firestore. And now that means we can start writing our first query to insert some data. So we can do it anywhere, but uh, let's just uh, do it here inside of this very constructor just to see that some data is being persisted. So I'm going to write this, Firestore. And now we have all these methods. 
So the way that the fire saw works, so it's not a relational database, it's a document oriented database. So that means there exists documents, they contain fields, and all of these documents, they can be in collections. So some people, they will say that a collection is like a table and a document is like a row and a field is like a cover up. But I think that's very misleading. You need to think of document oriented databases as being something completely different from relational databases. But we're just going to get started here. Uh, since the database is not schematized, we don't need to define any collections or documents or anything beforehand. So if we just make a collection here called hello world, it will just make a collection for us if it doesn't already exist. And we just chain methods together. So we can say collection dot add. And inside of this add method, we just insert some data. So just make curly brackets. And from here on, it's basically just key value, key value, key value in order to create fields that refer to some value. So if you say my field, and then say hello world, we insert this data into the database. So in order to make sure that this uh, code is actually being used, we'll just go into the app component. So the app component is the very first component that loads in an Angular application. And if we make a constructor here, and we just say private fire service of type fire service, we can now start using our methods. Uh, but since we just use the constructor, we don't actually have to write anything else in here. There is a security mechanism built into Firebase where the Firestore database will reject requests uh, by default. So you need to disable that. Uh, so the way you do it is you go into Firestore database here and you, then you click on rules. So when you open this up first, it's going to say allow read write if false. Then you can just flip this one to true. Uh, so your security rules are of course not secure if anything is allowed. Uh, but this is just to get started. So just make sure that it says allow read write if true. And then you can just uh, publish these. So every single time you make a change, it, it's going to ask you here, do you want to publish or discard this? Uh, so just set it to true temporarily. And now if we open up Firestore, I do have some other collections from things that I've been doing previously. But you can see now there is a collection called Hello Well, and there is a document with an auto-generated ID. And then the data that we put inside of the add method appears here. So we have successfully been making queries to Firestore. So I will end up this video uh, with committing all of this stuff to Git. If you don't have all of these files visible inside of your Git client, it is probably because uh, the Angular CLI already creates a Git folder. But because I also include other things than the Angular application inside of this Git directory, uh, I manually deleted the .git folder. Uh, so you can just go into your front end directory here and then just figure out if you have the .git folder here. If you have it, then just remove it and then you can go to the directory. Before that, it's the one that I have called FB video and then make that a git directory. And um, I'm just going to say video one and then I'm just going to commit this.